I call this regular meeting of the Council to order for November the 16th, 2021. Result of the agenda for the November 16, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. So we do have Councillor Friesen that's uh, absent tonight. Results of the minutes of the November 2nd, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, and the receptions and delegations 5.1. Result in pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed is a delegation on handy van service. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by uh, Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. 2021 from the Swan River Association for Community Living be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? It's just a thank you for us for supporting community, the Association of Community Living. Nothing further. All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result the Northwest Regional Library Annual Report for 2020 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Anything there, Mr. Delor Councillor Delorier? Uh, no, it, uh, numbers were down from previous due, due to the closures in 2020 as far as uh, books taken out and people coming through, but other than that, uh, I can answer any questions. Okay. For the discussion? None? All in favor? It's carried. 8.1. Result the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio and then Councillor Delorier. Um. Mr. Harvey, I read, and I guess back in one of the emails, back and forth, that there was some correspondence going back and forth um, with MIT regarding the intersection at 10 and by subway there, the intersection there. Yeah. Um, have we heard anything back to our concerns that were alluded to in the design of that uh, left hand turning lane and with the uh, curbs? Or raised curbs or raised medians, I should say. Yeah. Uh, so CAA pool talked to uh, the engineer, and uh, essentially they're proceeding with that design. But we can lobby them to try and change it. But uh, as far as they're saying, this is the design that's being chosen and maybe we can provide more details but that's my understanding is that we have to try and lobby to change it. Right so I did contact MI with the direction from council to uh, to try to change uh, the center medians on the left turn signal option or uh, let them know if they're unwilling to do that that our position is to do nothing at all. So. Uh, Obviously, they are. They have standards. They have proven that the, the the intersection needs improvements. Those two options, in their view, will happen. So they're not stopping. They will move forward with the left turn signals as designed, and to their standards. So uh, we we are free to do lobby for whatever we feel. But uh, the the engineering department will not obviously not stop. <coughs> Yeah, um, that was it. So, so with that, did they give any reasoning or justification why we needed such lengthy raised medians from the intersection? Like, 
I don't disagree with the intersection itself. What I disagree with is the, uh, blocks of raised median east and west of that intersection. Yeah, their there's their stance reported to me is that it met their minimum standards. So in order to have a left turning lane, you need so much room for people to park there who are going to left turn, and then the median needs to you know peer out or start before that left mean left you know in order to create that left turning lane, it needs to you know length and wide, and they need that length of, of room in order to create everything that's being created. But, but doesn't it, a painted yellow line could do the same thing as I see in other intersections with left-hand turn lanes in Manitoba. Why do we need the raised thing, what a yellow line could do? That question would have to be answered by them. I don't, I don't have the answer for that. It's when I did say, why not paint as opposed to raised medians, the answer was just their, their, it met their minimum standards. The, the paint would be below their minimum standard, according to the conversation. On this, Mr. Harvey? Yeah, and they're continually updating their standards, so you will find examples that don't meet their current standards uh, because it would have been built before those standards were updated. Um, but I don't think you'll find ones where they built a new one that doesn't meet their standards. So like an example is, uh, the road out uh, just east of town where they did all that earthwork uh, to change how the road came in so that it comes in uh, at a straightaway instead of on a curve. And so when it was originally built, it met the standards of the time. The standards have been updated, so that's why they had to change it. So I'm sure it's the same with this left turn signal where there'll be ones in the past where it was acceptable at the time, but these are their minimum standards now. Councilor Delorier. Um, two questions. First one on, on this topic. Uh, I had asked a couple meetings ago to look into what our, what our uh, rights are as far as municipality as far as uh, final say on this because I know when, when it came to a previous MIT work on 4th, which is a provincial hi highway, and we, we got basically a veto over it is that have we looked into that at all that question was asked and the response that i got was was the municipality's input has happened in the in the selection stage of that public uh, uh, whatever that was called. This, the survey the survey yeah. we did have a very small portion of the points uh, that were shown to us in that survey but that that was the response to what our input is. They could they wouldn't comment on you know what happened in the past on their projects, but uh, their answer is they're moving forward with this project. Councilor Bobic. So you say they're moving forward with this project, and if council can say if we don't like to raise mediums, that we could say leave it alone. But is it leave it alone, or is the ball rolling and they can do? their highway and they can continue on even if we don't like the idea. It is their property and their highway. They've stated they're they are moving forward with the intersection improvements. Uh, it's slated for construction in 2022. So if we are if council has the will to lobby to stop this project, we need to get on that. We've already changed our AMM notes. Yeah. So and that's a good point because we will have a chance to, to speak with I'm sure some of the ministers while at the AMM, so we'll have an opportunity I'm sure. So plus we have our MLA as well that is close by that we can help to lobby through. Councilor White. Is uh, Mr. Schuler, the MI minister, on our list next week when we're at the AMM in Winnipeg? Has he responded to our being able to meet with them to talk about this issue? Uh. We've, we've got responses from, no minister has gotten back and booked the dates, so no. Uh, but we have, we're in contact with our office that that may happen. But we've asked this office for a hearing. Several times. Okay. Now, failing uh, that, that may not happen in Winnipeg, I don't say they're wrong with us just making a point to zip in and meet with them ourselves in his office or meet him halfway. 
Yeah. Somehow I think they work for us. Absolutely. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, I guess just on this topic and kind of along the lines of Councillor White and uh, in terms of lobbying um, MIT or the, or the our minister, ultimately it was the public that um, decided that this was their better option. Perhaps instead of us lobbying the government, we should be lobbying our local local. Um, residents as well that this is I think that our lobbying efforts would be much better put into um, ensuring that the public knows what this is what this looks like um, I think that the government the ministers have heard the survey went out the people have spoken and that's what we wanted I for myself I would rather us put some lobbying into um, our general public here. Councillor Deloria. I guess just to comment on our Deputy Mayor Tony's comment, I, I, I agree with you um, that we should lobby our general public because I don't think a lot of them knew what they were choosing when they chose this. In conversations that I've had after the fact, no, but when, when I brought up the raised concrete medians, that's not what I asked. That's not what I voted for. That's not what I saw in the survey. So I, I think that it was a little bit dirty that it wasn't made more apparent. But having said that, I think we maybe have an obligation to educate our people that, hey, this is what's going to happen in our town if we don't get on the horn. Councilor Fawbick. So do we have any preliminary drawings of this? Uh, Pre-designed drawings, yeah. So there is, would that be something that we could put in the paper Those were on the survey, right? Yeah. That's just sometimes people have trouble reading the drawing. They're just a they're a survey, not a yeah. physical like drawing. It's a, it's a plan, not oh, a yeah. profile yeah. drawing. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. you're just yeah. reading the plans so okay. different people. No, I mean, but it definitely yeah, does show it, what the profile drawing. it definitely does show potentially of what that was gonna look like. Go ahead. Um, just just in that in that quick thought of, of what we're doing and in the paper um, is there a possibility of a uh, of a town hall and then um, you know us having that conversation explaining that exactly what mr. Delorier or councillor Delorier said um, this is what it looks like if you didn't feel you had enough information that you can sign a petition, you know, and that is what we use as leverage for the minister as well. Uh, I don't know if we want to get too far ahead, but that might be something that we can consider until we absolutely see what the province is, is suggesting once they have their drawings done. Councillor Delorier. Um, I guess I had one other question on the actual public works report. How's the, uh, how's the new grader working out? Uh, pretty good. It's uh, got an extra light package, so it lights up pretty well. Uh, the guys are still kind of figuring it out because this is the first snowstorm. And uh, on Remembrance Day when they first out, it wasn't so much the greater, it was just the conditions where it was icy and drifting kind of thing. Uh, so it took a little bit going, but that was because there was cars getting stuck and stuff. But uh, yeah, they're rolling with it now kind of thing. And then it has uh, the joysticks instead of the steering and antler rack. Um, so it should be more intuitive as they get used to it, but it's just, you know, it's a different set of controls. So they're figuring that out with this first snowstorm. Good. Councillor White. Relative to the whole report as a whole, one, I've been in a house for 43 years. When your grader, our grader went by, it was when they dropped the blade and just cleaned the driveway off, nothing, perfect. And please thank that. I was, is that because it's a better blade, a better design? Often it'd be, you know, two, three feet, foot and a half. It was as smooth as the road. Uh, yeah, I can definitely pass that along. I know they have been going a little bit slower because they're getting used to it, so but that might have a little bit effect. The downside of going a little bit slower than it. there's places that aren't serviced quite as quickly kind of thing so it's a balancing act well, that's good to hear and dealing um, specifically with the greater I've had a, a couple inquiries recently relative to third street south 
apparently, it appears true, all our trucks full of snow go down 3rd Street, Stealth, and dump down past the Co-op Agro at the far end. And we don't plow that road till later on in the week. So as a consequence of that, there's a lot of snow compacting. It's extremely rough, and it's a really good day I went yesterday to look at it. So they've got graziers down there, they've got LP down there, they've got New Era Ag down there, um, the coolers are down there, and the agro. And, and they got big super bees moving in and out. They say they're having real difficulty from a safety perspective relative to that road. So I'm wondering why we plow that road so late. Obviously, obviously the main arteries first. But I would encourage you to consider maybe moving it higher up in the food order because our trucks are making that problem. Go ahead. Uh, so just in regards to that, uh, Previously, uh, we had some discussion on snow clearing uh, with respect to liability, and uh, so I just heard back from the lawyer uh, with regards to updating the policy. So I'll be bringing that policy to the next CAL meeting uh, with those updates, and those maps are part of the policy, uh, so we can definitely discuss that, because currently 3rd Ave South is lumped in with the residential on the west, uh, so that Cal Meeting Council can have discussion for on third itself and uh, if there's a desire to move it to a higher priority, we can definitely uh, look at that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council Morio. Um, when you mentioned with, with the, back to the grade with the lighting package, just pass on to the guys, as, not to rat anybody out of it basically, but I notice a number of our equipment are not utilizing the amber uh, morning lights uh, on, on various equipment while they're out. So um, I think we, we install those light packages or, or requirements for safety for our citizens and stuff like that when they're out uh, going the wrong way, facing, going the wrong way on a street, picking up garbage, uh, lighting <coughs> on, and various things like that. So. Yeah, I if, the, if, if the equipment has the 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 uh, emergency they're not emergency but warning lights on them, they should be activated when they should be um, before somebody hits one of them or does something, and then we become liable because it turns out that that lighting package was not activated or illuminated as it should have. Been. Yeah, so. for sure. For the discussion, all in favor. Carried. 8.2, result of September Protective Services Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Paper Mayor Wittoni. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 8.31, Result of the October 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8. Council and CAO reports. Let's start with Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, I have nothing to report this time. I apologize. I was unavailable for the last um, two meetings that we had. Um, and nothing to report from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It's nice to have you back, our Deputy Mayor and Tony. Thanks. Um, Council Morio. Uh, nothing formally from me. Um, as I've been away, uh, I'll, I'll no cell land or productivity. So. Uh, I've just been catching up and doing some uh, more basically administrative work on some of the files that uh, uh, we're working on with uh, doctor healthcare recruitment and, right. and uh, uh, with the Provincial Justice Advisory Committee that I'll report on at our next uh, Committee of the Whole. Okay, so you had something already with them in the last little while then? Uh, last week or two okay. weeks ago. Okay, but, uh, perfect. There's a number of items I need to bring up to your attention. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bobbick. I uh, just attended a uh, shared service meeting with uh, Swan Valley West. Just uh, 
waiting on our return answer, I guess. Uh, just to congratulate the guys on the snow removal. The streets look good. More coming, but I mean, they did a great job. I've seen all pretty late. Yes. Thank you. Councillor White. Uh, on the third event with the AMS executive, it's a pleasure to meet with those people. Uh, it's nice to see the relationship we have with the AMM and the vice president and the other representatives. When we can phone them and they listen and they uh, appreciate, this, especially Swan Valley's hospitality, so that was always a positive. Then on the fourth, uh, we met with Swan Valley West uh, at, uh, at their establishment to look at uh, shared services and some options there. That was always positive. And on the 9th at PMH, and I can tell you that PMH now is, the board has developed within itself a, a new uh, medical professional recruiting uh, program. So the stuff that Swan Valley has been doing is certainly on the cutting edge of things other people want to do. So it's a real compliment to all our Valley municipalities for putting monies into a process to get people here. So I, I will report on that as it evolves. And on the 9th, uh, we met here in the office to plus uh, look at solutions to how to make our town a little better. On the 11th, I had the pleasure of attending the Remembrance Day service. It was so, uh, so nice to see the few vets who are still there. Uh, I get emotional when I, when I think of people giving their lives so, for our country. It's, uh, it's pretty, uh, a neat time. It was pretty darn cold. I was pleased to see the Stampeders there. We all dressed so well. And, uh, we can't do enough to help our vets, and uh, I, thank, I thank them all publicly again. And uh, the 12th, that was yesterday, the day before I met with Deputy Mayor of Antoni and CAO Poole to talk of ways uh, to improve our community as a whole. And it's always nice to meet these uh, casual meetings where we can sit and talk about one or two topics at a time. So I thank both you gentlemen for uh, sharing in your positive side of life. Thank you. Um, so I also attended the AMM uh, executive meeting. We had uh, quite, a, quite a bit of the discussion centered around crime and uh, issues in the valley and did some good, uh, good, good discussion and hopefully they'll carry some of that forward when they meet with, they meet with the province a lot more than we get the opportunity to. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they can take some of our concerns forward. Um, the next night, uh, we met with Swan Valley West regarding shared services, and uh, as Councillor Bobbick said, the ball's in their court. We're waiting to hear back for a response on their proposal. Um, and then I also had a library board meeting on Monday. Uh, for the most part, it was uneventful, but I do have some stuff I want uh, security related concerns at the library. I'd like to report on in camera. Okay. That was it for me. Uh, for myself, obviously, uh, it was great to have the executive here from the AMM. Uh, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to have them in our community to voice our local concerns. And like Councilor Delorier said, there's a common discussion there about crime right across the whole board and our concerns also about policing costs that are going to hit uh, a lot of the major municipalities including the town of Swan River. So we have uh, brought those concerns uh, to, uh, to the <coughs> team there and we'll continue to have those discussions obviously when we head to the annual general meeting um, next week. Um, one other thing that I wanted to bring up was a uh, concern that um, some, of the, some of our, well, I, I guess it could be everybody, but our um, sidewalks in town and, and some initiatives that some communities have taken called Safe Sidewalks. And I know, I believe that we had uh, a student here this past summer that I think did an assessment of our sidewalks in town. And it was suggested, uh, and I think a request may come, but it was suggested that um, if we know where some really bad spots are around town, that maybe we can highlight them as far as like, you know, a neon color or orange or something like that, just so that people can see that and, uh, and prevent any um, really bad 
uh, spills. I know that there are. It's hard to get them all because of what frost does from one year to the next. And I know that we have been working on them and grinding down some of the bad ones uh, last year. And I'm sure that we'll continue to do so in 2022. But in the meantime, if we do have some really nasty ones that we have, um, maybe we can highlight them and, and so that people can see um, uh, see them before they fall. So just something there that I think is going to come. Uh, and then I guess uh, that was basically it for me. Everything was kind of repeated already. So uh, anything from the CAO at all? Uh, yeah, I don't have a uh, written report, but uh, just for Council's info, uh, I prepared the, the airport RFP for the operations of the airport. Just thanks to CFO Benita for his review and thorough inspection of my RFP. Uh, but it's been sent to municipalities for the review. Uh, still drafting vaccine policy. Uh, it's basically finished, but the AMM did come up with a template. So I'm just comparing ours with theirs right now, but uh, we'll see that shortly. Uh, scheduled CAO meetings uh, for November 24th. Uh, we're continuing on with those. Um, obviously working on the AMM package for council. You guys should see something uh, hopefully tomorrow with uh, the agendas uh, and all of our meeting information. I did receive a response for purchase services uh, this evening, so we'll, I'd like to go over that in camera and add that to camera. Uh, for council review, <coughs> and just preparing for the November 30th Cal meeting, there's a, there's a lot of topics to discuss, the fee schedule, safety officer, uh, the arena, which again is a topic tonight, but you'll learn about uh, issues there and an update on the Dr. Rich uh, Foundation. Okay. Okay, that's it? Yeah. Just on the AMM, mm -hmm. again, for next week, obviously everybody's seen your emails on the, uh, they want you to perform the test vote, so make sure everybody has done that. And then for, as far as the agenda booklet, I know that uh, CEO Poole said that we're gonna have kind of a, a design our own uh, agenda off what the AMM is providing. But if you want to actually see the agenda uh, with all the resolutions, it is online. You can see, and plus there was an attachment that was sent to you. You can actually download to your smartphone if you want, so you can just have it carrying with you all the time. So just remember that that's all there. It's easy and it's in a bundle. So. Okay, so moving on. Uh, nine, new business, 9.1. Resolve the grant request to cover the rental fee of the Legion Room in the Veteran Hall for 2021 <coughs> committees that care annual toilet drive be approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Delorey and then Councilor Morio. Um, I guess a question, I guess maybe uh, Mr. B. Fedorchuk might be able to answer. Have we, do we have any bookings for, for the time frame that they're looking at already in that room? Mr. Fedorchuk? I don't believe so, but I have to check with Lana just to confirm. I'm sure they've spoken to Lana about this already and she referred them to, to council for the donation letter. Okay. Yeah, Beverly let me know that she spoke to Lana. Okay, Councilor Morio. Um, Mr. Fedorchuk, uh, uh, maybe the uh, administration would know, but uh, I guess looking at their letter and the length of time and their plans for having people come in and go, I'm suspecting that we're going to have increased or additional costs so like, of cleaning that place of the, with that traffic through that space. Um, or is there any plan for us to absorb that or how are we looking at handling that? Or are they looking at mopping up those floors daily themselves or? Yeah, that would be our staff that would clean that up. So that would be a cost we'd have to absorb. Okay, further discussion? Councilor Delorier. You know, I, I, I'd have no problem with this as a, as a one-time thing, and I think they, they recognize that with, you know, the restrictions or the, where they normally base this out of. I, I have 
no problems with this for a one-time thing. COVID has made us made lots of places in the uh, community have to, you know, accommodate one another. So um, for a one-time thing, I'm fine with that. And in, in the letter that can go out can reflect that. Different matter what to me. Um, I, I agree with that. This Swan Valley Communities That Care is a great organization. They do great things for the community. Um, and they've been around for a while. They did operate out of a out of a, a school facility that allowed them to interact with kids and thing with students and that type of thing. But because of COVID, that is not going to happen in that regard. I do believe this will be a one-time thing, providing COVID is and the pandemic eventually ease off. So uh, I would be in favor for this. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve, resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28242 to number eight, sorry, to number 28299, totaling $138,047.26 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 4983 to number 4990, totaling $78,313.12 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits in sorry, direct deposit in the amount of one thousand nine hundred ninety four and thirty four cents as per schedule C. Direct deposit totaling twenty six thousand eighty five dollars and eighty eight cents as listed on schedule D. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Latoni. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Result of the financial statements for the 10 months ending October 31st, 2021 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, Mr. Ganita, um, on your report uh, on page one of seven in the uh, accounts receivable, it shows that we have approximately $633,000 still outstanding on taxes on the roll. But then on page three of seven, um, under revenue, it shows under tax levy that uh, our actual is the same as the budget. Am I reading something wrong there, or is, how does that work? Our accrual basis of accounting revenues are reported when earned. Our accounts receivable is the, the portion of the property taxes that have not, they have not received the money yet, but the, the revenue has been earned. So. Okay. For the discussion, um, Chief Adorchuk, do you have your hand up or is that some other uh, thing on the screen that I see? Oh, that's my nose. Oh, okay. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property <coughs> under Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $5,082.68. Therefore, being resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be, ad be added to the corresponding ta property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act, be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added 
to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective December the 1st, 2021. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? Councilor Morial, then Councilor White. Um, I guess I guess someone from administration might be able to answer this, but uh, do we know why we have these individuals that are refusing or neglecting to pay these outstanding charges? Like they're not significant amounts, they're just Do they just feel that they should get the service and then not pay for it, or? Terry, I'm, or CFO Benita, I'm guessing that these are uh, repeat customers. Yeah, I, I can't explain why some people choose not to pay their bills. Yeah, that's always a tough one, but uh, we, we don't know if they're repeat. Uh, I don't know what, we just have to send notice and hope they pay their bill. Right. Councillor White. Well, exactly the same thing. We have an individual there on 18259, invoice number, owes us a thousand a thousand dollars. Is there any recourse when these guys don't pay their bills? They obviously will shut the water off in the middle of winter or the heat, but what can we do about that? Add it to the taxes. Pardon? And then they don't pay their taxes. And it goes to taxes. Tax Thank you. Uh, Councilor Deloria, did you have a question? Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 12, 12.1. Result of the bylaw 15, 2021, being a bylaw to establish a road improvement reserve fund, be read a first time. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, discussion, Council Morio. Um, it may have been brought up in the couple of meetings that I missed, but uh, what caused uh, this to come forward? Like I see the need for it, but what, what's causing it to come forward? Uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, so this was discussion with CFO Bimita and myself, and uh, so he added this. There used to be the MRIP grant, Manitoba or Municipal Road Improvement Program, and uh, that has, so you used to apply for it and you'd get a certain amount, usually every year, sometimes you wouldn't, sometimes you'd get a fair bit. And uh, the province removed that grant and just decide and then divvied up I believe by population how much each municipality gets yes. and, and it goes along with their grant basket funding. funding yeah uh, with their basket funding sorry yeah um, but there is an amount it's at least 61,000 um, that is in the basket funding uh, and anyways part of the municipal operating grant basket um, so we're looking that if we don't utilize that to put it in a dedicated reserve so it doesn't get swallowed up. And then it goes else. to roads, yeah. Okay. Same with the federal gas tax, and then this one. Okay, thanks. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 14, result of pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public Items of discussion is going to be rise, Centennial Arena ice surface, library and purchase services. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried.